Hi, this is Luma Ovidia Akwaba, Hadi and Latest. Uh, what do you think about the uh, promo? So, we are subscribe to the channel now. Message say, over subscribe. Do you want to say, over click the subscribe button? You know? Now, see what the notification is. We are going to leave the video with the other trendy. As we are now, we like the video, like the video, no? give us a thumbs up. Now, see share my offer for us. We will be now watching and we will be in the air. Mr. Kweku Kwati, Honorable Member of Parliament, whose statement where he called the way we run our economy a Ponzi scheme uh, is making the rounds. He joins us now to give us some further understanding of what he meant by that. So, yes, uh, why, don't you, why don't you walk us through your, your thinking on this one? We want to break the eight. I think the most logical thing to do is to listen to the people who are going to vote Find out what your concerns are and make commitments to deal with those concerns. That is how you win elections, especially when you are looking to break a cycle. Mm. And, and that is why I titled it the way I did. This piece was uh, for internal consumption. It was to wake the party up to what it will really take to realistically break a cycle we have all known. So that's the first point. Now, what, what is the message and what do I think people are feeling? It is not hard to, uh, uh, to see that business, individuals, have been affected uh, in many ways by uh, the hardship we find in our society and in the economy today, above the national level any household. And when I say national level, the macro economy, You are watching Juicy News uh, on YouTube. The, the stability Hot of our currency. Uh, the, our relationship with our development partners and people who lend money to us. Our interaction with the international community. Now, you have that only one part having quite some difficulties. Now, at the, in, in households, you would also see that because of the unfavorable macroeconomic indicators, you are also seeing its impact in people's pockets. And when I go to my constituency, I do hear the complaints. All I have been trying to do is to look at what has brought us here. And the first point is this. I think it is unfair on the Nanado administration or on the current MPP administration when we let it look like and maybe things were good, and then this administration uh, is responsible for the difficulties we are seeing. That is never correct, and if you listen to the commentators, it is clear that what is happening is the cumulative effect of decades from independence, if you look at the figures of how we have managed the economy, and things are coming to a head. I am clear in my mind that if we walk the path we have been walking, the next administration, never mind which political party it would be, it would be worse than this. We have been to the IMF 17 times. If you add structural adjustment program and HIPAA, 19 times. This is the first time we're going for an IMF program. And the IMF is saying, I will not put money in your economy unless some of your creditors forgive you your debt. So it is clear that things are getting progressively worse, not necessarily because this particular administration has done something extraordinarily wrong, but because when you do wrong things over a period, it is going to come to a point where uh, the, 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 the consequences will hit you harder and harder. That's where Ghana is right now. May I ask, now, if, is this to say that where we are today was inevitable that there were no decisions that could have been made to improve our situation for example if we had not borrowed so much if we had not borrowed so much from independence no you, in this regime you are saying that it's not fair to place the blame for where we are on this regime and i'm asking whether you are by extension suggesting that there's nothing this regime could have done to have made things better for no, example, I, I, could they I, not I, I have borrowed less? You are watching Juicy News mm. on YouTube. Question, think, Hot news all time. I think this administration, we, 
the NPP must accept our share of the blame. Even though I do not think we, we the problem started with us. There, 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 is, there are reforms we should have done, which reforms some of us are beginning to call for now to have arrested the deterioration that we inherited. So to that extent, yes. And I think as a political party, we should be honest to admit our part in the failure. But mm. I, it's also important, if we're going to solve this problem well, that we put it in context and that it is an economic management culture that we have lived with so long and that it will not just be changing a government or a political party that will change it. It calls for a certain new mindset in the way the political class relates to the resources of the country. And that is the kind of discussion I want us to have. There are many who have said, but why do you bring this discussion this close to the election? Mm. The thing is this. I want the NPP to be able to assess what has happened over all these decades, to concede that the political class, we have failed in our duty to provide the kind of quality leadership needed to give our people the prosperity they need. Mm. If NPP would recognize that, and that is not to say it is just NPP, uh, the previous governments and, and, and all. So if we can make that acknowledgement, then we can now say, draw the line and say, going forward, things will be different. Okay. And begin to put in place the things that this will require. If we do that, and I hope my colleague MPPs listen to me, if we do that and we sell the message in a credible, honest, transparent way, there's no way we will not win the next election. If we go through the traditional praise singing uh, political parties, uh, previous uh, uh, workings and, and, and making promises, you risk repeating the cycle we have seen, the eight-year cycle. Mm. Now, you talk about the fact that you admit that your party, your government could have actually done something. You've also talked about solutions and how you believe we should find solutions. First of all, tell us, what do you believe your party could have done to actually prevent the current situation in which we find ourselves? Well, there are the things I have listed in the statement. It is something, it, 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 it's not just even just this party. The mama. You are watching Juicy News on YouTube. Hot news in all time. time. We will not be here. All right? And it is this one. When you. And, uh, but, but if you permit me, let me explain the Ponzi scheme bit. Then you would, Please uh, go maybe ahead. listeners can understand why there's a need to do something. Otherwise, this country is heading for trouble. Okay. You know, we, every year, we overspend our means. And I have some data before me from the year 2020. On the average, every year, we overspend our revenues by some 40.1%, beginning from, uh, uh, the, uh, the data is from 2020, but this culture, this bad culture, destructive culture, suicidal culture, started after independence, and even a little before. So every year, you spend more than you earn. So how do we finance the difference? We borrow. The following year, you are still spending more money than you really have. So you need to borrow more to finance that year's over, overspending, but also to finance yesterday's overspending. So as you move on, you keep borrowing more and more to pay previous debts and also to finance the current year's overspending. Now, we have been doing that over such a long period, unfortunately, it is under the tenure of the Nanado administration that the lenders are beginning to say, this country, we will not lend to you. That's why I say it's a cumulative effect, that this country, we are not lending to you. We should be asking ourselves as a people, even if you put politics and elections aside, where are we going? If we don't change behavior, if there's not the awareness that we cannot continue like this, where are we going? That is where I 
say that many Ghanaians, myself included, fear that unless something significantly changes, this country is heading for a failed state. Why should I wish that on my children and my grandchildren? So that is why I am calling, uh, since it's a call to the whole country, it's a call to the political class, that the path we are walking is leading this country into a ditch. Okay. And we should wake up. But I am focusing on my party because I sincerely believe that NPP, we are capable of turning this country around. Mm. And that if we would face these realities, we would listen to the concerns of business, we would listen to the concerns of individuals, we should ask ourselves where we are now, what is the path to recovery? If we will ask those questions fairly and honestly, then we come to no other conclusion but that the reform you are watching of juicy now, news on YouTube. The election, Hot you news cannot all time. do significant reform, but you can signal that this is what we recognize this. We recognize that our public procurement regime has, um, has been fraught with irregularities. It is, again, not just this Nanado administration. There are many stories in the past under Mama's administration in the past that, that this is where we draw the line. Okay. And, and uh, uh, just a minute or two. Please go ahead. If we, if we will do that, if we will do that, I am confident that the NPP can go into the next election. It's four months. But if we signal these messages well, we can go into the next election confident that we are presenting to Ghanaians what they've been yearning for. And in that case, breaking the eight would follow automatically. Okay. Now... You, you, I mean, you, you've talked broadly about things that should be done, but you had also made the point earlier about what you believed you could have done, as in your government could have done. And that's why I was asking the question. Now that you've explained the Ponzi scheme, what do you are, believe? There are, are, are the you, things I've stated. Sorry. Uh, there are the things I've stated in the document. One, there must be the acknowledgement. Two, after you've acknowledged that there's a failure on the part of the political class, and therefore we're heading in the wrong direction as a country, and it is not a, a wrong direction. Uh, we are not heading the wrong direction just under this administration. It's a historical path we've been walking wrongly, and that is where we draw the line. I think the political class would do it. The, the, the opposition parties will not do it. NPP, we can rise above everybody and say this is what we believe, so we'll do it. So there must be that acknowledgement too. When you have acknowledged that the path we have been walking uh, has been wrong. Then the question is, so how do we deal with this? That is where I refer to the reform. The details as to what we would do is something as NPP we can discuss internally. But we must begin to deploy clearly interventions that would deal with the historical wrongs that I have, I have described. Okay. Now, but, three, when okay, you have done that, you must give people confidence that you are honest and you mean business. And that is why I talk about leadership by example. That we as leaders, we realize that things are going wrong. We are going to call every Ghanaian to do it. It's not time to make pro campaign promises yes, and promise people uh, plenty of things. Um, it is time, I, I conclude in 30 seconds. Yes. It is time now for Ghanaians to wake up. We're thinking in a common board, Ghanaians should wake up, let's work together. But you, the leader, before you can say that to them, you must deploy and tell people the things you, the sacrifices you yourself are going to make so that they can believe that we're in this together. If we do that, I am repeating, the NPP will win the next election with very little sweat. Okay. So the question I really asked you was that, what did you believe you could have done previously that you didn't do that has contributed to this problem. We should have what we departed from the path we met. The 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 the, the path and that and that path is one overspending your means and always borrowing to fill the gap. That is the fundamental point. We should have arrested that. We should have arrested that by rationalizing our expenditures. Don't spend money you do not have, even if you're going to use it on good things. In our individual lives, you do not just go borrowing because you want your children to be happy. And you go borrowing, borrowing, and then the next time you borrow your friends to pay the other <clears> friends, <throat> and you continue borrowing, borrowing. We don't do that in our individual lives because we love our families, and mm. we don't want our, our, our families to collapse. Why do we do that when we come to the national level? So if you ask, 
what is it we could have done? I'm saying that we should have arrested that trend. And to arrest that trend, you would need a specific set of reforms. Those reforms we cannot discuss on the radio station right now. But sure. it is a discussion that we are willing. And look, there are many people in the party who agree with these sentiments I'm expressing. You've been Deputy Finance Minister before. I'm just curious whether you raised some of these concerns while in government. I'll answer your question in two ways. First, yes, in our internal discussions, uh, those who are close to me will tell you mm. that I'm always the one drawing attention to SS expenditure. I'm a very cost-sensitive person, and I'm always, I've always been saying this. The whole time I've been working as a special assistant under the COFOR administration at the Ministry of Finance, the whole period I was a deputy minister in parliament, everybody knows me for this. So I've been very consistent throughout my political career. Uh, so if you ask, have you always felt that this what? But of course, when you are in a government, when you are a deputy minister, and you express views internally, but somehow things get done in a certain way, I think it is wrong for you to therefore come out and say, I said this, my people did not take it, so um, I'm coming out to say to, to what end. You will not achieve anything. Your best bet is to work internally to help your, 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 your government or your party make as much savings as they can and just hope that things would improve going forward. So my first question to your, uh, my first answer to your question is that, yes, I've always held those views. And those who have worked around me will tell you, the technical people in the Ministry of Finance will tell you that this is how this man has always thought. That's the first point. But the second point is this. Let's even assume that I have never had these views and have never expressed them. In our everyday life, you may be doing something wrong for some time. At some point, you just realize that it is not paying off for you. It is not leading you to the kind of life you want. It is for you to sit down and say, the way I have been doing things is wrong. It is not giving me the kind of life I want. It is bringing troubles to my life. And therefore, this is where I draw the line. Going forward, I will not do that again. So even if, granted, and look, I don't speak self-righteously. I'm not saying that as for me, I am some good person and that um, it is others who have done anything wrong. I have been in this with my, my colleague po politicians. I have been part of many of the wrong things that I am complaining about. I, I am guilty sometimes of seeing things that are not right, but in the name of collectivity, be it in parliament, in respect of the whole parliament, NDC, MPP together, be it within my political party, I am guilty of being part of this. So I'm not speaking self-righteously. All I am saying that whatever we have been doing as the political class, whatever we have been doing as a people, it is leading our country into a mess. So let us draw the line now and change behavior. That is my, my second answer to you. Mm. Uh, Mr. Kwating, how has your party responded to these comments? Because you really didn't spare them at all when you were talking about their role in our current position. Let me, let me quote you. You say, uh, we must address concerns about how much of our national resources we spend on ourselves as politicians and take steps to overhaul the corrupt public procurement regime we inherited from previous governments and have continued to live with. You are essentially accusing your own party of continuing corruption. How have they responded to this? Well, to start with, my, my, my uh, appeal to the media is, uh, you know, look, this country, we need to wake up and defend it and work for it together. If we, if, even if the politicians were doing something wrong, and we think it is a politician's duty to lead, uh, when the country is, sorry, if the country goes wrong, it goes wrong on all of us. Please, let's not discuss these matters in a way that, makes it difficult for people uh, to say their mind and to express their feelings about the country in a way that robs them against their parties. Look, if you read that statement carefully, I am saying that what we spend on ourselves as politicians, look, Parliament as we speak, 
is, is led by the NDC, the opposition. If you look at the Parliamentary Service Board, it is led by the NDC. There a lot of the practices, the wastage that I complain about, you find it in Parliament as well. So it is not a discussion about some political party. It is a culture we need to deal with and uproot. And therefore, when I say that the sacrifices we will make as politicians, I'm not just talking to the NPP. I'm talking to the NDC and everybody that as politicians, in order that we would deviate, we would depart from the historical path we have been walking, about which our people are so pain. And I am only calling my colleague politicians, not necessarily NPP, that we must change course. When I say the corrupt public procurement regime we, in, we inherited, it tells immediately that I'm not saying that we started the problem. I'm only saying that the entire public procurement regime has, has, has been corrupt, Maybe it was too strong as word. Well. Maybe with, with hindsight, I would have used another word. But all I'm trying to do is to say that the irregularities in there, they lead to wastage. They lead to the big expenditures that drive us to borrow. So if you want to take out that word, it's okay. But I'm calling attention to the fact that we need to overhaul our public procurement regime. And again, I would be happy because I believe that NPP is the best party that can fix this country. I would be happy if my party would boldly take this up and say this is where we draw the line. And in the next four months, deploy a set of we will do's, those that we can initiate. Let's try and initiate them now. Let us prove to Ghanaians that we mean what we are saying. And if we do that again, we will break the eight with very little sweat. What I was asking was, how have they responded since your statement? Well, the response, the response generally has been good. In fact, you know, as I said, this, this uh, uh, view was expressed on our internal platforms. Mm. And the feedback uh, I have had within party has been very good. Of course, there are always people who are worried about the headlines the media gives it. So when you say we are running the economy like a Ponzi scheme, it's just one line. And therefore, you see it, and your immediate sense is that uh, uh, Honorable Kukukwate is criticizing his own party for running a Ponzi scheme. So naturally, there are party people who uh, they see that, and they say, oh, how could Honorable Kukukwate say that? So there are some within party who are uncomfortable with this kind of discussion because it, 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 they, they worry that the opposition would spin it to mean that government uh, is doing the wrong things beautiful because this uh, is so and our hello so we are subscribe to the channel now mr say over subscribe now we like it now see what's a video no ama of a person in your dinner work was with me actually what you have a year so we are home a work on it box no move it in my next video thanks for watching like and share the video you can also drop your comment. Please don't forget to subscribe. Click on the bell to turn on the notification.